So I've had my mud motor kit for going on about eight months now and I figured it was time to do a review and share some things that I like, don't like, and share some tips I guess I'd give someone who was just starting out getting this thing to make using it a little bit more comfortable because it is different. It's much different than a regular outboard motor, but in my opinion, I think it's a lot more fun. So if you've been subscribed to the channel, you know I have my Swamp Runner kit paired up to a six and a half horsepower Predator engine that you can get from Harbor Freight. They're like 125 bucks. So all in all together, the kit costs $399 off their website. Uh, you have to pay shipping as well. And pair that with the engine, I'm roughly about a little under 500 bucks. All in all together, this thing is scooting down the water. Compare that to a five horsepower, say Mercury outboard, you're looking at, I believe, close to $1,000 for the whole unit. So basically you're getting on the water for a lot cheaper and in my opinion these motors are a lot more reliable than say a standard outboard because everybody knows when you have a boat you have problems and you're dumping money into those problems. Another thing is, is my engine is very very fuel efficient. I, like I said I'm running the Predator 6.5 horsepower and I've been putting around the lakes all day sometimes just non-stop running in search of fish in vain might I add. And I uh, barely used any gas. I mean, it'll cost me less than a dollar to fill this thing up every time that I, you know, go back out again. That's just how little fuel I use. To fill it up from nothing, it cost me five bucks. You know, it's really cheap. I forgot to add, you don't have to use marine grade fuel. You can just use your regular unleaded gasoline, the cheap stuff, because it, like I said, it's not, it's not a outboard. You don't have to put the ethanol free stuff in it. So that's another plus in my opinion. And also this thing, like it, like the name implies, the mud motor, it goes in very, very shallow water and you don't have to worry about, you know, it sucking up any nasty gunk and gumming up the water pump or any of that stuff because it's air-cooled and you can just kind of scoot on through. It's not very weedless though, but uh, there's a guy, uh, his name is JT Gatoring, he made a video on how to make a weedless guard for said issue. But all in all, it's very, to me, that's a very small price to pay for getting on the water and having a lot of fun. Okay, now as far as speed goes, I haven't actually done a speed test on it. All I can tell you is with myself, my buddy Zach, and all of our crap in my boat, we can still go roughly about, I'm guesstimating about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Nah, more probably like 10. They'll go fast enough, in my opinion. They will go fast enough. Now, if you want to make this thing scream down, down the waterways, go ahead and get you like a 670cc and just go hog wild. I mean, if you do, please tag me because I want to see how that, that sounds pretty fun. Now a couple of cons, they're not, I mean, they're not deal breakers, but they are kind of annoying if you're, if you're not expecting it. These don't have reverse. They have one direction and that is forward. It can be kind of tricky when you're trying to trailer it, but you know, with, with time, you know where to set the boat, you know how fast you need to be going. You, you kind of learn tricks of that nature. Another thing is these things have a very wide turn radius. I mean wide and to, to, uh, to turn these things, you really got to move your whole body and it's a lot different than using a tiller handle on an outboard, say for a small John boat. It's a lot bigger, you have a wider swing. It's, that's just something to keep in mind. So if you're going down a really skinny creek, you're not really gonna be able to power and turn all the way around. You're gonna have to basically use the tiller handle as a paddle and turn yourself around. Now, this, this problem is uh, more or less unique to the Predator engines. I'm not sure about any of the others, like the Honda. I know the, the Predators are like a Honda clone. I'm not sure if Hondas have the same deal uh, issue or not, but the oil shut off switch. Basically, if I'm if I'm in the middle of the lake, I'm trying to turn around, and I got that thing full, basically 90 degrees, and I'm trying to whip around. The centrifugal force pushes the oil to one side and activates that switch, kills my engine. Really annoying, especially if there's a lot of waves around, say, and your engine just dies, and now you're stuck bobbing in the water trying to start the stupid thing. To me, that's really annoying. You just, I mean, it's not like I said, it's not a deal breaker, but pretty sure you can easily bypass the switch. I just haven't done that yet, although I probably should. Now, the rubber handle that comes with the kit, it has a tendency to fly off. It, mine's gone, I don't know where the hell it went. I had to be kind of careful because there's a lot of times where I'd say I'd be kind of leaning forward for something or I'm just not paying attention. I have it by that rubber grip and it pop off. And now my, my motor just decides to go full tilt up. Holy shit. <laughs> it's actually happened quite a few times. And it's, it's funny when it happens, but it's also kind of annoying. Just something to consider. I mean, you don't need the thing. It's much more comfortable, obviously. But uh, if you're gonna do something like that, you know, try to see, see if there's a way you can secure it a little bit better because in my opinion, the screws, they just it didn't do all that good of a job. But, you know, it's a minor thing. 
when you're mounting your engine mount to the transom of your boat, it definitely would help if you put like a, uh, some rubber insulation or just rubber anything, just any, any type of rubber strip to put in between your mount and the transom. So that way, whenever you start the dang thing, it, that vibration doesn't transfer over because I have an aluminum boat and it, the vibration transfers all the way, you know, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out, but you know, it's, it's easy to overlook. Now, another thing is, like, like I was saying previously, when you let go of that tiller handle, especially if you're in deep water, the, the motor is going to go like this. It's going to go tilt up. So you need a way to secure it. I got a, a rope that I tied underneath one of the, the rib splines uh, of, of my John boat and just made a little loop that I stick the tiller handle through and that holds it in place. You're gonna have to kind of figure out what you want to do with that. Now granted, if you're in like two foot of water, it doesn't really matter that much, you can just let it go. I wouldn't really recommend that, but you know, it's just something you gotta keep in mind. Now, if you are considering getting this and this sounds like your kind of thing, keep in mind that per the manufacturer of this, SPS North America, you don't want the bottom width of your boat to be more than 48 inches wide. And what I mean by 48 inches wide, that means at the very bottom of the boat, the stuff that's actually in the water. Say you have a transom that's higher than 17 inches or a width between 40 and 48 inches, you're gonna wanna have the 100 inch shaft and that's, that's really long. The, the normal one that it comes with is 75 inches because it, the way it runs, it doesn't, it, there's no gearing. It's just a straight shaft into the water that pushes you through it. I mean, it's, it's simple, cheap, and it's, it's effective and it's pretty dang quick. Now, unlike a traditional outboard, how you have to get the boat on plane, you know, so you're sitting here and it kind of dips down and then gets up on its own plane. These don't do that. These just take it, they push it straight. They push it on like a flat plane. So that's something you have to consider when you're loading your boat down or trying to figure out how you want the layout of it, the layout of it to be. Because if you have too much weight on that front end, you're gonna, every time you hit waves, it's gonna come across the top of that bow. I've had that problem so many times. So I have to kind of reconfigure the weight distribution of my boat. Now, when you're putting this together, make sure that throttle screw is nice and tight and you have it oiled because there's been actually a few times where I thought, oh, it's tight enough, and then it wasn't, and I'm in the middle of the lake and I'm, you know, hammering down, and all of a sudden the wire pops loose and I have a jiggly handle and I have to manually throttle my motor at the motor, not at my tiller handle. So one th another thing to consider if you're looking at getting something like this is you're gonna wanna have a grease gun because before you take it out, you're gonna have to grease your shaft and the motor mount and all that stuff. Not a whole lot, but basically just to keep it all nice and lubed up and make sure it won't corrode or bind up and cause you problems. They're not expensive. I, I, I bought mine, I think I auto zone for like 20 bucks. If you don't even know what I'm talking about, I'll link it down in the description below so you can look at it. But I'm pretty sure everyone knows what a grease gun is. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it, it, this thing is great for getting in that, that skinny water that you need to go to. Say if you're a duck hunter, this is very popular with duck hunters. I do, I do bass fishing with mine, but that's because I'm cheap and I wanted something cheap to get it on the water with. So yes, you can, this motor you can do just about anything an outboard will do except reverse. You're not going to have reverse, as I said. Sorry. If you want to see what all entails going into building this thing, well, not building, assembling, I have a video on that as well. It'll be linked down in the description below. Anyway, that's my two cents on the matter. Uh, I hope I might have answered any questions that you might have. If not, feel free to ask them in the comments below and I'll answer your questions the best I can or I'll get you the information you need. So hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, show me some love. Don't forget, check the links down in the description below and I will see y'all next time.